I think that was a successful joint right there. I said, I caught you, Cam. You oh, slippery bastard. We re- re- rolling. <laughs> no, we only was I caught him right when too. he just started it up. I caught him. So, Pete, <laughs> you get none of the residual conversation. <laughs> Which they be time. wanting because they be like, if it wasn't mm-hmm. for Cam, they would only do 32 seconds of podcast. Yeah, we be sitting here mad long. We do. Y'all lucky this ain't 30 minutes. <laughs> Because when it's just me, you get a hot 30. I will stop talking mid-thought. But like, and then on top of – all right, guys, that's it for verbal cardio. Uh, you just then, freeze and oh, people go away. Oh, man, I stick to that 30. What's up, guys? We are back yeah. with another episode of Daddy Issues. The Issues of Fathers. You know, we still dads out here. Yeah, we you are. You know what I'm saying? I don't see my kids, but y'all already know that. You know what I'm saying? Y'all already know I'm, a, I'm the president of the Abandoned Fathers Club, Incorporated. And, uh, you know, they just out here just living their fully realized lives. <laughs> all I got for y'all is old stories, pretty much, at this point. You know, all we doing is texting. I'll be like, I text the boys this weekend. I was like, yo, man, you know what I'm saying? What's going on, guys? How was work? He was like, cool. And then Serene. Serene, I get about two, three texts before he disappears. Yeah. Like, so right, I ask damn. another question. How you liking the job? <laughs> Crickets. Sincere, he, he's a good responder. He'd just be like, yeah, I'm out here. And I've been texting him. I was like, you never say you doing homework. You got homework out there? He's like, yeah, I just don't have that much of it. I was like, all right. Because he always doing like the, the video game tournaments and hanging out, eating. Yeah. I'd be like, man, where that homework at, though? Especially on the academic scholarship. Right. You got to keep them grades up. Man, listen. Because if we got to pay for all that school from scratch, he he got to get out of there. But he, I feel he's the student student though. He yeah, knows. like you don't really have to worry about him. He gets it done. Yeah, he gets it done. Yep. And so that's it for me on the dad tip. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> <laughs> you in the trenches, man. You uh, got. I'm the envious. I was of in the trenches kinda. today. You envious? What happened today? Well, no, no. I'm Sometimes. Sick of this. Just, I am just sick for story of this. purposes, because you got I'm stories sick of it. now. It's just annoying, man. Like, so this morning, y'all don't know, obviously. Uh, I'm on my way here. I get a call. You got to come pick up Keelan. His eye is red. Oh, it's going to. And I'm like. It's going to explode. We're like, yo, every once in a while, it gets just irritated. It'll mm-hmm. go red for a little bit. It'll go away. Well, we don't know. Blah, blah, blah. I turn around on the freeway. Get back. on, Go back. By the time I get to the school, his eye is back to completely white. Uh, of course. And I'm looking at the nurse, and she can tell I'm pissed. Yeah. Because I'm like, y'all keep calling me up here for every little thing. He's fine. You told her that? No. Oh. <laughs> that, that's in my head because I didn't want to say anything because right. I'm already irritated. Yeah. And I'm irritated because it always seems to happen when we got when I got to do something. Right. Every time I got to do something, that's when, oh, his, his left pinky toe is itching. <laughs> we need you to come down. And this was made me mad. Like, let's say hypothetically we weren't in a situation where I'm available like that. Right. If she, if she had to leave work. For a, a irritated eye that wasn't even fully red, probably was just a little pink in the corner, they said, yeah. and went away. And I had to leave work for this. Right. This is ridiculous. You know, we know. Can you just send us a note that says, and he was crying this morning mm. over something. So I was like, he's, it was, you know, when you cry, you're eye red. Right. And I'm like, it's fine. Just send him back to class. Well, you know, we do. And they said red. I, when, I, when I saw, I was expecting at least let me see a little pink. Right. When I saw it was completely white, I wanted to flip over everything <laughs> in the office. And he's sitting in the nurse's office like, mm-hmm. He tried to go back to class again. He always tried to go back. He'd be looking at them like, what's wrong with y'all? Yeah. My eyeballs is crisp. And then I was like, what happened? He was like, ah. He just pointed <laughs> like this. He's just like, I don't know. I was like, I'm sick of this, man. Man. Always calling us up there for every little thing. They and it's always dramatic. Oh, his eye is red. and it's No, it's not. It's completely white. I feel like we never got sent home with parents Ever. in the 80s, man. We would fight. Pink eye. It didn't matter. Strep throat, bubonic just, plague. We sat in the office. You just until, sit in the nurse's office until yeah, school's out. Until school was out. Or until you're ready home. to go back to class. Yep. That's it. They call for everything. Nah, it's like, can you come get them? No. And yeah, that's the thing. Come get Not even like, okay, well, what's, what's – like, they didn't even give it. This one made me mad, too. I dropped him off at 8 o'clock, mm-hmm. 8.30. I got the call at like 8-something. You didn't even give it time to get red or heal up itself. You just right. – <laughs> Red, call. He's done. Pink eye. Like, by, you you could at least gave it some time. Let him sit in the nurse's office for a little bit. Then see, oh, it's completely white again. Right. No need for you to come. But no, come get him. 
And I'm like, y'all just be doing too much. Yeah, man. It's annoying. Hopefully they listen to the podcast. Yeah. They, 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 all right, they, noted. But and I'll just like, never uh, call you again. <laughs> <laughs> He's stabbing his, his, his classmates. <laughs> man, he he didn't want to come up here. You know what I'm saying? ridiculous. And so I picked him up. I was like, well, you hanging out with us today? He was like, cool. All right, then. You going to miss these valuable lessons, Keelan. Are they over there laying down. Y'all was going to talk about, I don't know what y'all be talking about at school, but you know. Shapes. Something, I don't know. Maya, what's going on, man? Well, all over the news this week is the trial of Amber Geiger. Oh, of course. Who murdered Botham Jean in his apartment last year. While he was eating ice cream. Let's not chilling. leave that out. That lets you know how much he was chilling. Yeah. When for you real, eat ice cream at the crib, that's the ultimate chill. Yes. That's wrong Jeez. to kill a man. I felt threatened. Get the hell. What, with what, ice cream scoop? He was going to throw it in my face and I was going to get pink eye and the school was going to Even if somebody somebody has broken into my home and they are they in mid-eat, I'm going to relax a little bit because they eat. Yeah. I'm like, oh, you eating, so you wasn't sitting here waiting to kill me. And I can assess the situation <laughs> a little bit. You know what I'm saying? If you got a bowl in your hand, I'm like, wait. Because I'm going to think you crazy for coming to somebody else's house and eating. And then, you know, from that, man, she, ugh. And did she buy the ice cream? Or did she think, like, oh, I don't keep ice cream in my house. Right. Did you bring the ice cream? Maybe this isn't my house. You're right. I'd be like, wait, I don't have ice cream. She wouldn't think what if that was the, what was, if that was the deciding clue? What kind of ice cream is that? <laughs> Briars. Uh, I don't like Briars. <laughs> and then she put the gun back in the hole, so this ain't my apartment. I would never get Briars. Did you expect her to get convicted? No. No. Nah. I was surprised she even got convicted. To be honest with you, yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't expecting. I thought that. she was gonna get suspended. Yeah, that's yes. about it. Or well, she got fired. Yeah, but you know, I expected suspension. Yeah. You wow. Know? I yeah. expected. To get that's where we at now. Cops be killing people. We just be like, oh, ain't nothing gonna happen. Yeah. Nothing substantial. Okay, that I kind <laughs> of expected a conviction on this one, ah. just by the letter of the law. Even though they they let that guy go who shot uh, the man running away in the back, do you remember April a couple years back yeah. where they mm-hmm. and then he planted and then yeah so, okay so let's move on <laughs> to another question. <laughs> we dead inside. Yeah, we? Like, it was like, yeah. She got ten years with possibility of parole after five. What do you think of that sentence? I mean, at first I was like it's BS, but then when I saw the family's reaction. What I'm going to be mad for? They don't care why I care. It's still BS, though. It is BS. But they did it. The juries explained, the jurors explained that they did it partially based on his beliefs, the family, and how they would. That's why. If they would have had, I think if the family would have been like, I want the maximum, they would have gave, you know, that 28. Mm -hmm. But since they was listening to the family members and, they was like, well, you know, if they want to want to want it, let's let's do ten. I wish they had a phone line to the afterlife. It'd be like, yo, both of them. What you think she should get for murdering yeah. you, dog? Oh, you know what, man? I'm a Christian and everything. God's cool up here, but I'm gonna go ahead and give her that twenty eight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I praise God, I forgive her and everything, but she got to be forgive with the full twenty eight. Yeah, forgiveness isn't something for the court to decide. It's for God to decide. Yeah. That's not right. in the court at all. You're not supposed to be in business. there judging the crime. Yeah. That's it. Take religion out of it. You're supposed to be in there just like straightforward. Do you think that in the future people will look to this sentencing and say, hey, look, um, the precedent has been set that if you are confused mm-hmm. that – you should only get 10 years. You think there's a danger in that? I mean, I don't know. I just, I don't know. People are always going to bring up this case. Yeah. They're going to bring up this case big time from here on out. Every crime, every murder, oh, so he getting this? Well, yeah. look over here. They always going to come back to this. But again, I like I have, I feel no way. When the, when you're, when the father of a guy uh, who, who was murdered says, I want to be friends with my son's killer one day, I don't give a damn. Like I that I like, you want to be friends with your child's killer? Why would I be mad at ten years? If dad probably be like, you know what? Hey, let's come over for Thanksgiving. Like, how about no years? You could just stay. With, we'll, we'll rehabilitate you. I feel like they're gonna go visit her in prison. For Something some like money that. In the yeah, it's just ridiculous. 
So I see all these people <laughs> outraged, and I get why they're outraged. But I'm like, well, if the family ain't outraged, what I'm going to be outraged for? The brother giving her hugs, the dad forgiving her. And I'm just like. And right. I get, you know, I get forgiveness. It's better for your personal soul to get it off of you because holding that is heavy, so I get it. But I, me personally, I'm not built like that. You know, I'm a hold on. I hold on to small stuff, so I know. You kill one of my children, I'm not. Even if I forgive you, but I still want you to do fifty to life. Would you forgive? This isn't on the paper, but would you forgive someone if your children were in that life, like in the gang life, and they had done something to cross to break a rule, and then under the rules of the gang or the mm-hmm. mob? then they were removed, went out to the bottom of the river or whatever. Mm. Would you then forgive that person? The, the kid? Uh, because that's, they're in the life. I, I would I understand would, it. Yeah, it's not, it's not so much of me forgiving the person. It would just be me like, well, that's what comes with it. So, yeah, I would understand know. the life. Like I, would, would I, I wouldn't be mad at the person, I guess. Not, not, not so for, you still killed my kid, so I'm not like, oh, well, it's Let's okay. Let's be friends. But I would be like, but hell, he was in that life. That's... I was yeah. trying to get him out. I kept telling him that's what's going to happen. That's that's what happened. He snitched, so they killed yeah. him. I'm like, ah, you, you knew what was yeah. going to happen. I would be, be at the at the cemetery like, <laughs> why'd you snitch? <laughs> you never <laughs> raised you better than this. First of all, I would have never snitched. Every time I bring flowers, I just get into that conversation with myself. But then you, but I would expect it from that yeah. life. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd be like, you knew what it was. You knew they was going to get Wee Bay on you. You know what I'm like even with this lady, I I wouldn't forgive her, but like I would, because some people do the forgiveness for the healing factor. I could move past something without forgiving you. Mm-hmm. Like I, I can still, like you know what, I can accept my child's going and, and grieve and you know work it out. But I'm not gonna be like, but you get a pass. Mm-hmm. Like that's mm-hmm. just ridiculous nah. to me. To me, that's ridiculous. But I'm not gonna tell somebody else how to grieve. Yeah. But that's just ridiculous to me. And I could move on and accept it without. Giving you a pass for it, and we're not hugging. No, hell no, we're not hugging. No, unless I'm hugging to choke the you there out, no yeah. hug. unless I'm squeezing you. Yeah, to, to the life leaves your body. Now, I might hug for the next snap. Yeah. I'll be like, can, can I give her a hug? And then yeah, yeah, <laughs> and then it's an accident. It's only guy. give me ten. Uh-huh. Like, only give me ten. <laughs> I just want ten. The clean snap. I'll be like, oh, because you come in like this. Arms extended it, <laughs> and they get scooped up by the cops and the yeah. bailiff. I just lay down. Then yeah. I'm then I'm going for the insanity plea. It was in the moment I blacked out. Next thing I know, it was a crime was of passion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they should only give me three for that. Yep. Did you see the bailiff come stroke her hair? Or no. Yeah, I didn't. It, the whole thing was a freaking minstrel show. Like yeah. it was ridiculous. Like why are you stroking her hair? What are you doing? What are you doing? And it'd be different if this happened normally in all murder trials. Mm-hmm. Fine. This is weird. This never happens. Stroking hair, giving hugs. Pat, y'all, y'all was her best friend. Y'all felt so bad for her. Why? Yeah. I, it was just like, it was just disgusting. I want to know what they normally do in trials. That judge and that bailiff. I want to know if they have a history of this. Has anybody talked to the bailiff? I know the judge, they spoke to the judge, but that bailiff. I want to know what their history is. I honestly couldn't even find the bailiff's name, so if anyone knows, you could put it at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, because this is just ridiculous. Like, for people who are pissed at the family, I'm like, that's their own personal stuff. I have no yeah. I have no feeling on the family. I'm not mad at them for forgiving her. That's their, I can't tell people all. how to get down. Like, mm-hmm. But the judge and the bailiff, they can kiss my ass. They can kiss my ass. That was ass. just too much. What you doing all this for? It was ridiculous. Don't nobody be doing this in court. That's what I'm saying. That's not a thing that ha- if it was a thing that normally happens, fine. This is not normal. And you were just like, like they were treating her like a child. They gave Lorenz Tate mad years and dead presidents <laughs> no remorse. <laughs> and he served After all he country. did for this country. He served his country. <laughs> now speaking of the judge, she gave. Uh, Geiger, her her Bible. Mm-hmm. And this is something uh, that Earthquake had posted this morning about a link to the judge. The judge said that she gave Geiger her Bible because Geiger was upset that she didn't have her own Bible 
and the judge didn't want her to go to jail without a Bible. You know how many you know how many Bibles are in jail? So many. You know how many religious nuts so are in prison? So many. That, 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 it would have been no shortage of religious help At once all. she got in there. That's the place mm. that people go to find religion. Ab- absolutely. They good. And she know as a judge, you know what you they good. do in the prison. It was just too much sympathy Come for on, a murderer. Man. It was way too much. Yeah, I don't give like a damn what is. the judge said. It was just way too much. Like, I feel bad for this poor white girl. Man, fuck her. Yeah. I, I, I don't understand it. Now, the a group of atheists called Freedom From Religion have launched a complaint against the judge. <laughs> That's just petty. <laughs> saying the act was unconstitutional and favors one religion. Do you agree? Under the law. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it does. Yeah. yeah. Cause like, cause, cause like, if that was a Muslim, you know, person on trial, was, was you gonna have that same kind of compassion? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? She probably wouldn't have. She'd be like, oh, well, you she ain't probably Christian. didn't have a Quran. You mm-hmm. ain't Christian, you know. So, you know. You but you can, know. like, people have a, a misconception that you swear on the Bible. Uh, you swear on whatever your religion is when you do go in there. It's not mm-hmm. just the Bible. A lot of people think that, like, they make other people swear on the Bible. They don't. The Bible. You swear on, you know, whatever you get down with. Do you think this judge should be disbarred? Hell yeah, get her out of there. I'm sick of her. I don't know. I need to see. <laughs> I need done. to see more of her. <laughs> I got. Like, I know. Because <laughs> she judging. shows so much sympathy. I have none now. Fire her ass. Get her out of there. Cut her legs off. She don't need to walk <laughs> ever again. Like I'm done. I'm I don't done. know how she normally gets down. Like I, I know nothing about this woman beyond this case. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's hard for me to be like, get her out of here. You know? I don't know. I don't want to speculate. I don't want to yeah. go into conspiracies, but she was endorsed by the Dallas PD. Yeah, best friend. Oh, sorority sisters. The you plot thick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorority sisters, they holding up. They oh. I was like, yeah, they buddy, buddy. Well, well. Buddy, buddy. That changed the, the dynamic then. Mm-hmm. And the dude whack. and the, the neighbor getting murdered? What's up whack. with that? And then the girl who filmed it, she got fired. It's a whole thing. Well, the neighbor got murdered. The news initially reported he was shot in the mouth and the chest, like at the wire. But, but later they said that he wasn't shot this way and that he had been shot last year from like a childhood, uh, not friend, but acquaintance had tried to kill him last year. And that's why he was subpoenaed for this case. He didn't want to testify because he just wanted to get away because he thought his life was in danger. And so we don't know who did it yet. So it was either this person or... Obviously, the Dallas PD are, you know, oh, so he got history too, huh? Man, this is this is wild. This is deep right here. What's going on here? So he was scared to to, to go to court because he was, man, they gonna find out where I live now. Mm-hmm. What's going on? And then maybe and then, they man, found him. that makes sense if if they didn't create this narrative to yeah. mm-hmm. keep us all Dallas PD's ass. Well, his friend was killed in that shooting, and he was shot in the leg. So this man ha- was shot last year before. Um, so he had just got shot last year. Yeah. Man, from oh, an unrelated ins- and then it might have followed here. up. Oh, well, yeah. damn. Well, see, that's what I was going to. They ask never you. caught his shooter. Mm-mm. Oh, yeah. Okay, so he had to pee, guys. <laughs> <laughs> he whispered it to you. He's like, "Daddy, I gotta pee." <laughs> you don't want to interrupt. So yeah, excuse me. That's dope. But if you could just, if you could just stop telling the, everybody uh, I had to pee too, <laughs> that'd be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Dad. Well, I smell coffee all of a sudden. I, you just took a swig? I have coffee. Okay. Oh, I just got coffee. Uh-oh. It was strong. having a stroke. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's one of the <laughs> signs. Now, what, is it? what do you smell? It's you something. Smell burnt toast. Burnt, burnt toast. toast. Right, that's toast. What is that? Is your heart burning? Mm. <laughs> What's burning? That's right. Your brain's just some <laughs> Something switch. sizzling. You're like, man, y'all smell toast? Anybody? <laughs> what if you're making toast? Oh, that would be the worst. Oh, man. I you got just, the to- toes just going. having it. Okay. Huh. Well, yeah, you're on, you got arm and a whole bunch oh, of yeah. things. But what if you just making toast? Somebody had just punched you in the arm. <laughs> Everything. <just laughs> masking the symptoms. Like somebody's like, hey, morning. Bow. You, they making the you toast. You can't be good, man. And all of a sudden, you. <laughs> let me check on this there. toast. <laughs> Done. Send the ambulance with eating your toast. <laughs> man. Um, okay, so we were talking about the murder of Joshua Brown and that how it's not been solved. Yeah. It's sort of up in the air. And there was a lot of reporting about him being shot in the mouth, which may have, which turns out. That's definitely look like it's true. execution. Yeah. yeah. For snitching. But it but turns out it true, wasn't yes. true. Okay. But all the major outlets reported it. So why do you, what do you think? Yeah. About the news media that went and ran with this story that was obviously going to incite. Because they wanted to piggyback on well, know, now, the trial. Yeah, and now 
media has gotten to the point where even they don't care about being accurate anymore. They want to be first. They want to be first. Everybody wants to be first. So the accuracy, like they have no problem putting something out and then just retracting yeah. later. Mm-hmm. He got shot in the mouth, y'all. Execution. And they don't they don't feel nothing about it. Like apo- we apologize, we were wrong. And then they just move on, like, oh. They don't even they're not even it used to be like, wait till we put this out to me. Now it's put it out first and we'll correct yeah. it later. Because they all scrambling for yeah. attention. Yeah. They all scrambling for attention. They they want to be first, they want to be viral, they want the source to be, you know. That's sad. It's scary yeah, it's because you don't know what's accurate now. And what if they had started a riot? Man. Yeah. Which could easily happen. Everybody on the edge, especially in Dallas. They don't care. They'll give them something to cover. It is a riot in Dallas. It's going We're down. It's going down. We're first on the scene. It's crazy. Does anybody out smell here? burnt toast? And then <laughs> People <laughs> getting hit <laughs> with bottles. <laughs> I'm right here on Fifth Street, <laughs> right outside of the. <laughs> Grab and hold them. Okay, yeah, so the media really kind of messed this up. Yeah, man, what's what's new? I'm you just don't numb care. There yeah, I just like. Was... After a while, you just you yeah. shut down. It's so much. It's so much. I'm going to get to the point where I just don't care about shit. <laughs> because there's always going to be something. You always. Just, you can never relax and just, oh, man, something else. There's always something out here. So you... I'm waiting for that point, though, where everybody cares. Everybody kind of goes numb. Because I think people will chill out more. Really? Yeah. But a lot of stuff be sliding. Though, yeah, there'll right? a lot of stuff yeah. slide. Well, I think, I think too, too many people are already not caring. Mm-hmm. That's the problem. You know what I mean? So I think too many people are not caring about the stuff that they should care about. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, fussing over somebody's comedy special. Or, oh. You know what I mean? Like... It's enough people not we'll caring them, about yeah. stuff that really matters. Right. And then being outraged about silly shit. Right. Why do you think that is? Because the silly shit is easier to get. Because they, it's it's harder to to really get involved with something that's real. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, it's way easier to just fuss about a special. Mm-hmm. But you can't, if you talk about people's lives or something, you know, real stuff. That's when it gets tricky. And, that, and then you got to, like, well, what you going to do about it? Uh, uh. Like, if you fuss about a special, well, I just want to watch the special. Mm-hmm. But if you fuss about, you know, something that's real or the government or whatever, and it's, all right, what you going to do? Oh, you mean I got to actually go out there and, <laughs> and vote or, or, you know, start a petition or get somebody out of office or research some actual stuff? No, nobody wants to do that. So they just fuss about the little stuff. Plus, the government will get you. They won't get you out right, but they'll get yeah. you like an, an audit later. Oh, you fussing? Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't trust the government, man. Nah, I, I said know. it right here on this podcast. I don't, I don't, I don't need trust it. y'all. I know you made AIDS, but keep going. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, we did, Tony. Huh? <laughs> Can I see your arm real quick? Do you think the Dallas PD should investigate or the feds take over? Who should investigate this witness's murder if you don't trust the government? Well, shouldn't it be the feds? The feds under... Our the, current administration or the local? I think like they should be. I don't out. trust the local. Yeah, they should be out of this one. I don't I trust the locals either. It does make sense for the feds to investigate, yeah. or at least yeah. the because ain't the sheriff's department different, a different entity than uh, the actual police force? The Dallas, right? PD? Yeah, so maybe the sheriff's department. Do they? Because they have they have their own. They do jurisdiction. counties, yeah. right? The yeah, sheriffs. and they have their own like rules and stuff yeah. too. So yeah, maybe the sheriffs should do it, but not the PD. I don't think they should be involved in it. I'm just bring looking at bringing IAB. Okay, so while I try to find the answer to that one, we before everybody before we started rolling, we watched a video from the Real News about forgiveness. Mm-hmm, yeah. Um, and this woman, uh, this the Real News is a independent news association out of Baltimore, mm-hmm. uh, oh, wow. very respectable uh, news network. You often see uh, Cornell West on there, Bernie Sanders, Killer Mike. You know, they don't have a lot of money. It's not too flashy. The anchors aren't all, you know, <laughs> tank tops and mini skirts. But you know, they're, they're providing real information, thought out information. So if you don't follow the Real News, they're a good, a good place. And the Jacqueline Lukeman was making the argument that black church completely misunderstands forgiveness mm-hmm. uh, and that the burden of forgiveness is unfairly placed on black people. We'll link that at the bottom. But y'all just watch this. What do you think about that? I agree with her. Yeah, she had good points, man. I agree with her. And I just was talking to a friend about this, how people misinterpret. They just think they just, like, it's kind of like, I'll put it in, 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 a, in a 
tangible example. It's kind of like how people think about Martin Luther King, right? Like, he was just this nice guy. Like, just roll with it. That wasn't who he was. That wasn't right. what he was about at all. They never want to talk about his 40 acres speeches and his militant speeches. All they want to say was, well, Martin Luther King just wanted us to all get. <laughs> no, that's not true. That's not. People always take that part because mm-hmm. it fits their narrative of like, hey, excuse the bullshit that we do. That's why people do that. But mm-hmm. it's not it's not like that. But that's, you know, that's what the, especially, you know, especially white people in white media. They try to push that like, hey, hey, guys, I know we did this, but uh, you're supposed to be OK with it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, that's not. They love throwing Martin Luther King out there and skip all the other stuff he said and, and did. And I'm like, no. They go to that one speech. <laughs> well, every time. <laughs> I have a dream, the table of brotherhood. Mm, all right. That's it. All right. No, that's true. And I mean, I don't want I don't want to stir anything, mm-hmm. obviously. But <laughs> just bring it back to Amber Geiger, some text came out between her yeah, and somebody else. She was racist as hell. She was, and she was speaking oh, ill of the MLK Luther King. joint. Yeah. yeah. You know, she's getting paid time and a half to go stand right. around a parade. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not like you're doing this out of the kindness of your heart or you're volunteering. Right. You're getting paid for this. And so she said, you know, some messed up things about MLK. She did. It wasn't funny. No. But you think she was trying to be funny or you think yeah. that it was? I think she was, it was a joke. You don't think it came from a bad place in her heart? Oh, probably did. Mm-hmm. But it, it just wasn't funny. You know what I'm saying? Because I give you credit when if, if it made me chuckle, it was, like, was kind of funny. But it was racist, but it was funny. I, I didn't think no, it was I funny. do that all the time. People be like, that was messed up. I'd be like, but I did laugh. But yeah. <laughs> so. I will laugh if it's funny. But she had all kinds of little racist, you know, yeah. remarks. I'm just up sick of all of this, and I'm sick I'm of everybody. Sick of we don't know who to trust out here, man. I'm sick of it. You know who I trust? Me. That's <laughs> who. I trust Robert De Niro. That's a He don't be it. giving a damn. He don't give a damn. <laughs> and he and he and he smashes black women, so I trust yeah, him. I don't. That ain't why I trust him. I trust him. You can be racist as hell and smash black nah, women. Nah, man. Yeah, you can. Nah. Slave owner did it all the time. Nah, he ain't no slave owner. <laughs> they smash Robert black De Niro. women all the time. That's true. Get in here, Winch. Now go out there and Pick my cotton, make my meals. How racist do you think you can be if you're a kid that you claim is black? If you're a white person and you claim all your kids that you claim have your last name and they're black, you think that person is still racist? No. Um, the slave owner thing, that that's when you are a multimillionaire superstar actor and you still rocking with black women, I trust you now. This ain't no slave owner bullshit. This ain't <laughs> back in the day. I'm just saying you who you smash doesn't not mean you're not a racist. When you Robert De Niro, it is. If you can say you trust him, but I'm saying that reasoning behind it, like smashing black people, does not mean you're not a racist. I'm not saying he is. Oh, okay. I'm yeah. just saying for that rationale, that is not. It correct. helps though. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like people. It's a step in the right direction. You know, and even with people who have, like, it's this dude on my page, my IG page that follow me. He got two black kids, but he be coming with the bullshit. All the time, the, <laughs> the Democrat Republican, like he's a Trump. I think he's a Trump supporter. He like, oh, and I'm like, that political. I'm like, yo, stupid. and I told him one time, I was like, it's dangerous that you are raising two black boys because you clearly are, you know, he's white. Yeah, and I'm like, you don't. I don't think you get it, bro. And that's interesting. But they seem to like Colyon Noir. You know Colyon Noir? Nah. He was a spokesman for the NRA. He's a black lawyer, and he's with. Like a lot with Killer Mike in that black people should own guns, and so mm. he's right of center. And white people seem to love him. No, they love guns. They love guns. They love you talk guns. about guns. You can, yeah, you be the most militant person ever if you like, but guns. They be like, oh, okay, we yeah, mm-hmm. guns. So I, I just don't. Does does being a Trump supporter necessarily make you a racist? I don't think it no. makes necessarily makes you a racist, but I think it it tells me something about your views and your. Lack of empathy for mm-hmm. anyone else. Like he might say something that f- fits you, so you're like, "Well, I ride with this because that fits me." But you don't give a damn about anybody else or mm-hmm. anything that's happening around you. So I don't think if you're a Trump supporter, you're necessarily a racist. But you don't use you're selfish. That's true. You're very selfish. Definitely selfish all 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 the way through. You know, because I feel like I feel like a lot of people that voted for him weren't racist. They were just like, "Oh, I think he can help my pockets." Yeah, mm-hmm. they put the pockets above all else. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, all right, selfish. That's true. Yeah. Um, I I was watching Doctor Boyce yesterday. I'm not gonna support everything Doctor Boyce says, 
because I haven't watched everything Dr. Boyce says. So don't be like, Dr. Boyce said this, you know, 10 mm. years ago, and you said you watched Dr. Boyce. That's not that. But he just said something interesting that he was repeating what Trump said, and Trump uh, had helped Van Jones with um, incarceration, mass incarceration, and he mm. helped Van Jones because Trump is very much against mass incarceration mm. unless it's immigrants. That's a whole other thing. Yeah. But that Van Jones never thanked him. Not on air. I'm so sick of it. Thank me. But then he went and said we should, uh, he thanked a bunch of other people for it, and then he said we should get Trump out of office immediately after Trump had helped him with the mass incarceration thing. (laughs) So? So? It's not mutually exclusive. Okay. Wait, when did Trump help him? When he was already president? Yeah. I mean, I get it from Trump's point of view. It's a little shady, man. I just helped you. You turn around. You trying to get me out of office. Every... Anybody's gonna be offended by that. You're gonna be in your feelings about that. Oh, absolutely. That. But I mean, so I, I get Trump. Care. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's like I get where he's coming from on that. I just but helped Trump. You. But Trump's thing is, I guarantee it's not about back. It's ego. He want oh, everybody to thank him for everything. Absolutely. He be like, oh, you thank me, I'm me guys, absolutely. me. <laughs> but I, I, and I know so many people in the comedy game. Oh, look out for you. You look out for me. I don't. I don't want you. Here's one thing about me. Like I don't. I don't ever want people to do things for me just because I did something for you because it's yeah. not genuine it's like oh Tony showed me love let me show him love. I appreciate it but it's not real genuine yeah when people show love out of nowhere for no reason when they didn't have to that's when I'm be like yo and then you got the people that that might have looked out for me or did something for me and then they bragged everybody yo I helped them out with this it's, it's about you it's not about yeah the real act of it you mm-hmm. know what I mean like like when I help people I don't want I don't need all of that. Yeah. A simple thank you in the moment, personally, that's good with me. You know, you don't got to publicly be like, "Yo, Tony did this." I don't. When I help people, I don't, I really don't want people to know. Mm-hmm. Like I'll be like, "Yo, yeah. don't, hey, don't tell nobody I paid for your rent." Yeah, yeah, I know because you then pay it makes, for people's rent. No, if no, I no, did no. do something <laughs> like that, I wouldn't want. Don't tell people that. Yeah, because then everybody else. Well, what about? Can you do something for me, or can you? It's not even for that reason. I, 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 that's what that would be mine. Like I if, just, if, you know, just keep that on on the hush. You know, you know mm-hmm. I did that for you personally, not for you to to tell everybody. And so, uh, you know, and there's a lot of that even in government. It's like you know, pat me on the back. I'll do this for you. You do this for me. It's all just fake to me. You yeah. know what I mean? And so. And and Trump just he's that guy, he's uh, you know. And he's guy. always been that guy, man. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Give me a shout out, you know. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. He's helped out a lot of black people, I'm sure, in his life. But you know, that doesn't negate. The it other doesn't shit negate does a damn to black thing. people too. So it's mm-hmm. like, and that's the thing I don't like. Like how even when you brought up uh, Boyce and you clarified that you don't agree with everything, like I don't I don't know why everybody thinks like that anyway. If I like one thing that somebody did. Or agree with one thing. That doesn't mean I like everything they did. And right. I agree with everything. That's that's crazy, first of all, to think that you have to ride or die with everything. Mm-hmm. That's stupid. And that's the problem with politics. They're like, well, I got to be a Republican or a Democrat. Or I got to. No, you don't. You can be all over the damn place. And that's fine. That is fine. You don't have to 100% do anything when it comes to agreeing or rocking with something. That's mm-hmm. stupid. There's TV shows that I love. I didn't love every single episode. Right. Some of the episodes, I was like, this is that bullshit. <laughs> but the season as a whole was good. Right. Yeah. Or bad. You know, like, I don't, there's there's albums that I hate, but two or three songs, you know what? Those were good. I don't know why everybody has to go all or, or, or nothing it's on everything. Enough. It's just ridiculous. That's a ridiculous way to think. Do you think that's, it's the same as it's always been? Have we always been all or nothing? Or is that something that's different now? No, I think the majority of people, that's just how they are. It's just, yeah. it's all or nothing. Mm-hmm. Instead of picking and choosing, like little, you know, even with when you take somebody who's super racist or whatever, they might drop a gem within all the stupid stuff that they say. They might take that particular thing, I'll take that mm-hmm. and, and mm-hmm. screw you on the rest of it. Mm-hmm. And that's fine. It's up to us to discern yeah. what they're saying, not mm-hmm. just say, oh, this person said it. It's the gospel. Like when we right. talked about, what, what's her name uh, a couple of weeks ago? Uh, what's the black girl name? Oh, Candace Owens. Everybody held, yeah. yeah. She made good points. She, every once in a while, she'll say something, and I'm like, okay. I still don't like her. Still don't agree with 70% of the stuff she said, but 80%. Yeah. But every once in a while, I'm like, that wasn't bad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what? I still don't like her. But it doesn't, it doesn't mean, it doesn't negate, you know, what someone is saying, though, or yeah. a, a different thing that you could take. You can learn something from pretty much everything. 
Oh, you can learn a lot you from her. You can grab something. Just in general. You yeah. can grab something from almost every situation. Mm-hmm. And you can just take that little thing and then push the rest aside. That's true. And Even that's the fine. Trumps. You can learn. Yeah. They wrote books about how they did what they did. Mm. No one wants to. I mean, they didn't write them. Ghost writer wrote them. But <laughs> there's some gems in there. <laughs> like, there's gems everywhere. Yeah. Um, this is the last thing I will ask about the Geiger thing because she's uh yeah the sooner we get her out of our minds the better y'all remember three years ago when that radicalized black nationalist killed five officers in dallas Mm -hmm. yeah do you think this trial is going to paint that incident in a different light history wise i don't know because i forgot about that to be honest with you until you just brought it up i forgot it was dallas i'm starting to get all these cities confused yeah i'm starting to get all the people confused too like it's, it's a lot. But I don't think I don't know. I never even really thought to think about both of them. Yeah. Together. So that's just me though. I got nothing. Yeah. Okay. I if I was to answer that, I'd be forcing it just yeah. to say something. But uh, I don't know. If anyone in the comment section on YouTube thinks has any opinion on that, please let us know because that's just interesting. You know, it's been three years and there's three two major stories mm-hmm. coming out of uh, about the Dallas Police Department. Yeah, I don't. I got nothing. We got audience questions though. Yeah, oh, we, we've been skipping about, those man. for a while. Let's get in. <laughs> we gotta ask. Let's ask good questions in the uh, YouTube comment section. We'll go through. Yeah, they don't be asking as much now. I think maybe well, we've been lately. We've been like going in on the topics longer, mm-hmm. and then we don't have time. Bobby, when I whenever I go to the comment section, I don't be seeing that many questions though. Yeah, It'd be primarily comments about the the app. Um, Fridgman asks, Tony, what made you decide on the vegan lifestyle? And Keon, have you ever considered considered trying the vegan lifestyle? Um, I'm vegetarian. Um, you know, I keep saying that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> try to tell everybody, you know what I'm saying? I'm vegetarian. <laughs> I, strictly, I, I strictly quit eating meat because the animals. I just always feel sorry for them. So... This was something ever since I was a kid that's been in me. And so I finally was like, you know, I got over the I need meat uh, that was in my head and just gave it up. And then that's what that's why I did it. I knew I was I knew I, I knew I was going to do it eventually at some point in my life. And I just did it. 2017, January. I was like, all right. And then stuck with it. And now, you know, slowly creep into the full veganism. But I'm not, you know vegan all the way yet you still eat eggs and cheese not solo Mm -hmm. but like if um you know i eat cookies that may have egg and milk in them i might do biscuits i might do pancakes whatever but so but i always look for the vegan option Mm -hmm. and then if, if if i don't have it you know ready or like you know the options ain't good enough then i go uh like i had biscuits in the airport the other day it might have been milk in there butter you know butter on them Sometimes butter on my popcorn, so yeah, but no meats at all whatsoever. Strict on that, but rest of the stuff I'll be like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've tried. I've I eat. I've had weekends where I just be like eh, I'm not gonna have no meat this weekend. Mm-hmm. Or I've had meals. I mean, it's fine. Um, am I ever gonna be a vegetarian? Probably not, though, just because I like like people are like you don't need it. I don't need a lot of shit, but damn it, I like it. <laughs> like I don't I don't need. Most of the stuff I have in my closet, mm-hmm. but I like I it. I like shoes. Uh, you know, it's a, so like when people get you know get at meteors, you're like, you don't need this. I know, I know. I I just like it. Like, do I do I like it to the point though where I think you need to be burning down the Amazon for it? No, I like breathing way much better than a steak. Like that's mm-hmm. I don't like uh, the extremists on anything. Everybody knows that I hate extremists, but like for meat eaters who'd be like, I need, no, you don't, you don't need to burn down stuff or open more. First of all, I was talking to my brother about this the other day. Cause we were, you know, we both eat meat, but we both think that people are ridiculous with this whole thing. Like, why do we even need more cattle farms? When every time you go to, when have you ever gone into a grocery store and they have run out yeah. of meat? When does that ever happen? Matter of fact, most of it goes bad. It's being wasted. So why do you need more, farms and more we're not eating it this fast like people be like they're mass producing because we we don't need it. i would rather go into a store and see that all of it's cleared out mm-hmm. at least i know that we're actually eating it 
most of it just goes bad or, you know, it gets, it's past expiration date. We're not eating it like that. You don't need to do that. It's just greedy rich people trying to get more money. You don't need to mass yeah. produce like this. It's ridiculous. We could easily go back to just regular farming. And if we didn't have it, if it run, if you went on Thursday to get some steak and it wasn't in there, well, damn well, have something else. Like, it's That's not fine. that deep. Mm-hmm. It's not that deep. Well, in the third world, they don't have, and they're, they're coming up as their economies come up, so they want more meat. Yeah. So I think a lot of that farming is going to help people who are, are now coming out of poverty and now getting the meat. That's what I figured. I knew it wasn't about like the U.S. grocery stores. Mm-hmm. I figured it was like because it's a lot of people. We we babies over here. We we spoiled, mm-hmm. and so we think, oh, it's just food everywhere. It's food is as far as the eye can see. But the majority of the world, they they hungry as shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But so, then but then I don't want to see nothing going bad though. Yeah, like I don't want to see nothing that's, going bad. That's America though. Yeah, I don't but think I'm it saying goes bad that, over there. We'll we'll ship half of it. Like you don't need it all then. Right. If you got it all, cut back on what you take, and then. Ship Give it money. away or ship it like we it's just this is ridiculous. But the money. Yeah, and the people pockets again. People the money. people choose their pockets over everything. They choosing the pockets. That's why we we we're not gonna last long as a as a planet. You don't think so? You don't think we're gonna grow meat in a petri dish? No. We're gonna start doing this is gonna be too little too late. Because uh, yeah. we putting money above all else yeah. and we're gonna mess up the environment, cause a greenhouse effect. We're gonna be like Venus and then we're out of here. And then the the plan is going to jumpstart itself back. Like up I know, I know with a, science, a lot of kids and a lot of they're creating new ways. So like like one guy I saw, and I don't know how real the story is. I got to look, but he was able to turn air into water, or he was oh, like pull the water droplets the water, out of the yeah, air. Yeah, so like can... I'm hoping that people just you know can start these old rich the, the Jerry Joneses of the world. They gotta go, man. Jerry, they Jones. gotta go. I'm just sick of them. But back to dude's original question. No, I have no problem. I don't. I'm not one of those people to be like. I need this meat. I just like it. Like, but if there's, you know, like I, I've I've gone to comedy clubs. They'd be like, you want the wings or you want the cauliflower? Mm-hmm. The cauliflower wings be delicious. I'd be like, I'll take the, you know, the the bites or whatever. Like, I don't. Yeah. It's not. It's not. I'm not one of them. You know, steak and potatoes all day, every day. Close my heart. You know, like I don't. I don't need that. But yeah. I just like it. I like. You know. I'm just tired of having the conversation about my diet. I'm oh, because I had a follow up question. Oh no, it's fine. No, the, the, this is cool. But I'm just talking. Yeah. In, in my life, I always have to have a conversation just because I'm a vegetarian. Yeah. Oh, it couldn't be me. I don't see but how I, you yeah, do. But I don't it. know why anybody I cares. Need, it's like con- it's every time I mention I'm vegetarian. Here we go with the tap dance, and I'm just like, can we just? And he's and Tony's not even a person that like pushes it. He just says, I'm a vegetarian and leaves it alone. Mm-hmm. Like, there are vegans that are out there every day on Instagram. Vegan strong, you got to live this way. And it's like, shut your ass up. And if that's what you want to do, fine. Shut your ass up. But Tony just be like, this is just how I eat, mm-hmm. and it's not a big deal. And even when he orders out somewhere, he's like, do you have maybe, you know, it's not a big deal. So I don't know why people get at him for, like, come back. Like, no, he doesn't have to. Like, that's not. And then when I do order, man, that couldn't be yeah, me. Oh, here we go again. Yeah. Every day. I'll just yeah. be like, right. And then I'm like, you, you know, the it couldn't be. I need no, you don't. You like it. You don't need it. You don't. It's not that. You just like it, and that's fine. Just say you like it though, but you don't have to. There's. So you're telling me every time you eat a salad, you have to put chicken in there, or you have to. Not every. You time. don't have to. Do There's the only like, thing people really need on the diet tip: water. <laughs> this is all you goddamn need. You need this, but everybody want to overlook that. Uh, I, just I wanna... couldn't do it myself. I want to speak out for people who say, I tried being a vegetarian on two occasions for more than a year each time. And every one of those times ended with me and all by myself with a rotisserie chicken, just grubbing that chicken. Because <laughs> <laughs> at the end of like a year, no meat, you know, being real good, I just was like, I need protein. I need it. I need it. I need it. I don't have it. Why do you always say you need protein? There's protein because in so much stuff. And there's yeah. protein. It, for, I don't know if it's not bioavailable, but I did try it. It's not like I was like, oh, I'm not. I'm against it. Why do you say I need it? Why, because why I, do you it feel worked. Like... When I ate that chicken, I was like, oh, I feel better. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't imagine. Like, I'm so deep, deep into it. I couldn't imagine eating like a, a chicken like that. I don't, I, I don't I don't think I could handle it. Oh, it's been he, so long. Yeah. I'll be like, oh. What I don't like about when I did the vegetarian, when I do the veg, especially when I do it for days in a row, I be hungry. 
Mm-hmm. Like, because it, it, I just, it don't stick. Like, I be hungry. And I do feel lighter, so that feels, you know, fine. But I'm already hungry now, and I eat meat. So when I don't eat it, I be even extra. Like, I don't like eating that much. Even though I'm all people like you always eating because I be hungry. I don't want to. I don't want this life. I wish. I don't want it. My appetite wasn't the way it is. I be like hungry. I wish I was not passionate about food. Like I hate that I be wanting it all the time. <laughs> like last night I didn't want to eat. Like uh, Sabrina made me dinner. It was like I ate at like seven, and then uh, I went to the Flappers, did a show, went to the gym. I was like, cool, I ain't going to eat again till in the morning. I get to the crib. I'm watching Ainsley eat the streets, and I'm just like, I'm stuck. <laughs> and then I went in the kitchen uh, and ate. But I knew I wanted food. As soon as I got back from Flappers, I was already like, I'm hungry again. And, oh, it's just because I was putting the food away. When I got back from the comedy club, I was putting the food away from when it was cooked earlier. So I'm looking at it as I'm putting it in the – in the band, just lusting after, like, man, I could get some more of this. And then, Dude, and I just be hungry on the late night. I'd be eating cereal late night. And that's, and our problem with our job, too, we be up late. We be up, man, late. After a comedy show, two shows, greeting people, you, you I'm tired eat, yeah, and, and yeah. hungry. I mean, it's because you're seeing food, but sometimes you just got to eat a little bit. Maybe not eat a lot, but maybe you just eat like 200 calories. I can't calories. eat a little yeah, I can't bit. Eat a, I try, I've tried to eat. I cannot do bit. half the plate. Half a peanut butter sandwich. Nah, I ain't no that? halves with me. That's too small. That's the problem. I can't half it. Nah, I just. I, I want the whole it. portion. I can. A whole I can, portion. I can yes. half it. I can half it if it's if the, if the full portion is huge. I can half it. Like we went to Gangers Grill the day before we left Virginia, and it. I mean, I got a lot. They filled, so I purposely ate half so I could eat the other half for breakfast. Cause I knew he was gonna be in the airport a while. But I was good with that half. I could have finished it, but I was good. But most portions, I'd be like, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, knock the rest of this out. Just because. Look, Grease with you, you're not overweight. So you're probably eating yeah, the no, right I'm amount. Fine. Well, like, Genghis Grill, it, it was healthy. Yeah, I'm fine. You know, that's where you make your own bowl and you mm-hmm. put your own shit in there. Yeah. I love Genghis Grill. I'm like, man, this is this is the life. And this is, there's a lot of protein and vegetables and vegan stuff, man. I'm sick of you. <laughs> no, it's true. No, I I eat like no. There's it, they say by cup, but how many cups of broccoli do you have to eat to it have don't like matter. a half? A, not actually, not Take that it. much. It's like it's a uh, it's a lot, lot in there. Pumpkin protein. seeds got a lot and of peanuts protein. Got a lot. Peanuts maybe, but that's okay. So peanut protein, a uh, peanut butter definitely has a lot of fat. Too. And then there's I uh, recently found out how much uh, stuff has vitamin C in it that everybody goes thinks orange juice. Right. They but it's like a lot of juice. other stuff that has like a lot it's of vitamin C. a lot C. going on out here. Yeah. And is it bioavailable? So, it, okay, peanuts do one cup of peanuts has 38 grams of protein, which is as much as four ounces of chicken. So that's not that much chicken for the peanuts. So I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you yeah. peanuts. If you say I just need protein, you have options. I do have no, options. You just like the taste of meat. And Which you is fine. That, that's fine. Or too. and the meal sometimes. Like when I'm on the road, sometimes I want to grab something real quick. And the stuff that they be having, like veggie and vegan option wise, I'd be like, this don't look appealing. Like I don't yeah. want this. No, because when I was a uh, vegetarian, I was a good vegetarian. Mm. Beans, all this other stuff. It wasn't that. It was at some point. It was just like you eat this right now, and you need to eat this right now. You it was like my body, meat. and I I, I ate it, and I felt chicken. better. Yeah. I so feel uh, better. How I've, I've heard that. I had more energy. Mm. Yeah. I was able to lift more weights at the gym because mm. uh, I'm all about the gym. So I, I it worked. So you think only animals can? Give no, no, you no, 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 no. I think it's body specific, specific because like I've heard a girl. I know this girl who said she was uh, vegan and she kept getting sick and she kept getting. Mm. And the doctor was like, "You're particular. But you need meat." Right. And she said every time she eats, she feels so much better. But she tried. Did she try? She was like, "I didn't want to be." The meat eater, but I just was tired of being hungry or sick and tired, and so it's for me. And then you got—I know other people that you know they feel that way about meat. Mm-hmm. They're like, once I stopped eating it, I felt a thousand times better. So I think it just depends on you, you know, yeah. like and whatever you do. But I, I wish most people would just admit that I like this versus I need this. You know, don't need, need. we don't need you majority need of stuff. Water. We have. I don't need. All the bedrooms. I don't need you. You don't need a lot. Just say you know, hey, I, I like this, and that's yeah. that's fine. I don't need hardwood floors. Yeah, but I want them yeah. right now. You know what I mean? Like, I need them. 
<laughs> okay, so, well, this is kind of going off what you're saying. Now that you have two cats, does it bother you that they're both carnivores and you're providing meat for them? No. Nope. So they, they meat need this morning. meat. Huh? They need meat. The uh, cats need well, meat. Well, young kittens, they said uh, the wet food is better for them mm-hmm. when, they, when they're young. And so... Um, so I get them the the canned food, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and and animals are different than us. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. cats are natural carnivores anyway. Some you know? people are natural carnivores. No, Unfortunately, I, I think I might be on the natural <laughs> carnivore because I tried nah, twice man. to be vegetarian <laughs> for over a year. I'm not I'm like, let me try this again. It didn't work. Nah, I don't I don't think humans are natural carnivores. And they always make the argument because of the oh, we got canine teeth. Mm-hmm. Have you seen the gorilla's teeth? Shit, really? They look like vampires, damn near. But they herbivore city. People just, you know. But anyway, that's that's. But our brain topic. grew. Okay, but I, I, yeah. Um, that's not. But yeah, I feed I feed them canned food mixed with the dry. I mix it with the dry food, and then boom. So the dry food has uh, bone meal protein mm-hmm. as well, so it comes back to. to yeah. That. I just wanted to. I just want to kind of throw you off your game. No, well, no, it's it's not because uh, I look at animals as different. Like you know, yeah. you put a cat out in the street, he's gonna eat meat primarily. Mm-hmm. He's gonna be eating rodents, little little mice or whatever. So they're not us. Yeah, you know what I mean. So okay, Carlos Garlington asks, "Yo, Keon, Tony." Ca- upper uppercase letters. <laughs> oh, I was like, why are you saying it like that? Okay. <laughs> Long story short, I had a warrant, but instead of paying it, I bought my mom a gift. Is it wrong? My girl was upset that I put my family morals ahead of my personal safety at the time. Wait, he had a warrant? Mm-hmm. That he had to pay? Like he had to well, pay he had him. to pay the warrant? Wait, I don't get it. Probably had a fine, outstanding parking tickets or something. He didn't go into too many details yeah. about what the warrant was for, but it w- it could be solved with money. Uh-huh. And instead of giving that money to the court system, he gave it to his mom. For a gift? Yeah. Not, not something she needed, a want? I don't know. Maybe the gift was a light bill. I mean, I don't, I, I don't I respect some, I don't respect does he have petty kids? fines. I don't know. He it's all he wrote. Because like if his girl got mad at him enough to where like you're gonna go to jail for this for not paying because you bought I think that's kinda dumb. Yeah. Like if you're gonna if go to jail. If he was about to serve some serious jail yeah, time, you gotta that, handle that. Just just pay it, like, and then get the gift later. Like I think But I, cause I'm silly. all for handling your responsibilities. Though. Yeah. Like I I'm very much, you know, handle your your bills and your important shit before you do something that don't really matter. Cause whatever whatever you got, you can get later on. You can get a late birthday gift. You can get a late Christmas gift. Yeah. Sorry, I couldn't get you on Christmas. I had to warn you. Know what I'm mm-hmm. saying, but here you go. You know, they can wait. Yeah. yeah, that's my mindset. Like you know, uh, you know, you got to be more responsible. Especially if the ramifications is gonna be like you go to jail. Yeah. And now you're missing days from work. Now you ain't got no job. And mm-hmm. now you ain't like the the domino effect from what could have possibly right. happened from not paying these warrants doesn't seem worth just the getting gift? a gift. Like that doesn't seem worth it. That doesn't seem. Now, if his mom is on her deathbed, like yeah. only got a week left, then by all means, you know, do. But what then you again, do. she'd probably be like, "Don't be wasting that money." On I, me. I guarantee you, moms is like, "You better not do that." Yeah, but you can't tell nobody none of that when they're trying to, you know. So, like, if I'm sick, I don't want people bringing me flowers. I don't want. Oh, don't nothing. do none of that. Don't even come see me. Nah. <laughs> I know you're coming, me but some don't, food. I'm, I'm I don't want to be a downer. I don't want to be a burden. Just let me waste away in this hospital. No, bring me food, though. I'll like, see you Bring me food. If I'm going out, uh, bring me food. I would like to eat, though. I want to eat. I and I want to eat everything. If I'm on my way, like for sure, like he got five days, I, everything that I couldn't eat because it was, I'm going out. I want to have a heart attack before I even go out. <laughs> bring me the donut with the chicken on it, all, all that. I want to die. Before I die. I want a donut with pizza inside. Mm. A whole pizza. Just because. So it's probably, that sounds disgusting. Yeah. But I want to try it because I'm on my way out. <laughs> I bet that would be good, though, if you made that, that kind of fried dough with the pizza, like a calzone kind of thing. That might actually be good. This is what I picture. An actual huge donut. And then when you bite it, it's like a whole intact pizza inside. Do those and flavors go together, And the though. box and everything. Huh? That'd be my thing. Like when people make 
Like when I be watching YouTube and they just make the filthy, like the ultimate mm-hmm. extreme burger, I'm like, that stuff doesn't look like it goes together or it's too much and it doesn't look appealing. Mm-hmm. Like I've seen, I saw them make this one burger and it looked so good. Then they covered it in cheese and deep fried it. And I was like, now, now you cross the line. Like it, it was fine. Now it don't look good no more. Now it just looks like too yeah. much. Like why are you mixing these two? Yeah, so I don't yeah. know how good a donut and a pizza would be. It would be fantastic. <laughs> I had cheese on a glazed donut before, and it was yeah. good. It was good. <laughs> Surprisingly. I was like, what do you mean? Mm, <laughs> well, the Hawaiian rolls, they don't have vanilla, but the Hawaiian rolls are the best burger buns you're ever going to find. Well, I love Hawaiian rolls. Hawaiian rolls are good delicious. on their own. Yeah, they so I imagine. And I'm not, a, I'm not even a bread eater like that, but Hawaiian rolls, I'll just sit there and eat it. How are you Those. not a bread eater? I need it with something. Like I'm not just gonna eat bread. Like I know people, my family members, they just eat bread. You don't they like? They can just take a well. Biscuits is delicious. Okay, that's that's a whole nother. That's a treat. Yeah. But like I know people who would just take a slice of bread out, you know, and just eat it. And yeah. I'm like, I'm not. They putting anything on it? No, they just eat oh, it. Yeah, like even ridiculous. even with dinner rolls, if I don't have the the butter, yeah. I'm not just gonna the eat the dinner key. roll. The butter is needed. Ro- bread to me is just like. Eh. Yeah, unless you get it right out of the oven. That cheesecake factory bit. bread is good. The the dark one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's some good and I bread. still put butter I on still, that. Yeah, the butter. I still put butter on it. Okay, so we are mixed on bread. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's no consensus on bread. Uh, I mean, I like and even what you described the the fresh out the oven bread is good, but I still want some butter on there and then the butter milk. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and this is why because sometimes I'll go the butter route that's why I'm not uh, vegan I'll be like man put the butter on there uh, butter and so it's good like, ah. you know what's good is if you get that big Hawaiian roll thing or big Hawaiian bread so it's like yeah, a Hawaiian roll you, talking about, yeah. you cut out the middle and you fill it with spinach dip oh uh, uh, yeah I've seen spinach that spinach dip is good it is artichoke dip good too oh uh, the spinach artichoke dip oh uh. So I like seven Parmesan. layers. Sabrina made me a dips. vegan version of that. I tore it up. I tore it up. It was ridiculous. I'm a fatty, man. Yeah, I was. I'm just at the end. I of just the zoned day, out right now thinking about food. I am mm. a fatty. Y'all don't Love know it. what it's like being in these streets on the struggle. <laughs> okay, Save on Price asks, "Hey guys, what is your take on dating a girl with a kid when you're under the age of 24?" I mean, I know me at 24, I was like, absolutely not. That was me at 24. It was just my own personal. I would, I refused to take girls who had kids seriously. Like, we could smash, but I'm not, we can't date because I'm not taking care of this kid. I'm just not, not at that age. Like, now it's a whole different thing. If I happen, let's say I was still single and met a girl with a kid, we'll see what happens. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But at that age, I was like, absolutely not. Because well, I knew I wanted my own family and my own. That was just me. That was just, I don't think anybody's wrong. I remember I had the mentality that dudes who did it, I'd be like, man, this dude's, a, you got played. You a sucker. Like, you fell for the old okie doke. And then I got older and I was <laughs> like, like oh, it's a scam. Like yeah, but I was younger. I was like, you you a loser, bro. Why are you taking care of somebody else's kid, man? And then, you know, I got older and I was like, oh, that, thank God for step parents. You know, mm-hmm. like, step parents are great. But uh, at that age, for me personally, no. I was just like, I'm not taking, I knew I wanted my own fam. And, and at 24, I wasn't even trying to be in a relationship or nothing. Like, so definitely not trying to be a father of somebody else's kid. I didn't even want to be a father of my own kid at 24. So, you know, but that was just me. 24, I was already two kids deep. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> do your thing, man. If you really like this girl, uh, y'all y'all hit it off, connect. I mean, it shouldn't be a – you shouldn't turn her away, you know, because of that, you know. Could be missing out on a good thing, you know what I'm saying? Oh, the kid. You know, it just depends on the situation yeah. and the people involved. Because I – Sincere was born when I was 24, so I was two kids – in the game by that time and and, and make it, it be sure it's authentic though yeah like some people feel obligated like well i gotta take care of this kid because right like, like yo make sure that's what you really want to do because you can't be just jumping in and out of this kid's life like yeah. so if you're gonna dive in you gotta be ready mentally ready to dive into that if you're not ready for that then you know don't even bother do you think it's do you if you dated a girl with a kid would you expect to be able to treat that child like your own child, like discipline him and talk to him like your own child? Or would you say this is kind of like a child roommate situation? <laughs> <laughs> it, it depends. Like after time and, you know, after time and I'm taking care of this kid, paying mm-hmm. bills, you know, all, then, yeah, that is, you my kid now. That all things go. Mm-hmm. But in the early stages, you know, it's kind of a 
fill her out, you know. It's a, yeah, it's a case by case yeah. basis on that. But once it depends you in on the how game, the mom is with yeah. the kid. Because some some mothers are like, you know, I, I'm you're not really gonna interact with my kid just yeah. yet. We gotta put time in. We can smash, but you know, I want you out of here in the morning before my yeah. kid gets home. Whatever you you know, whatever the case may be. And you got some that be like, here's my kid. This is us right out yeah. the gate. And so it really just depends. And on And I the think it individual. depends on the other person's, you know, the other who, let's say, either way, either the mother or the father is still actively involved. I think you got to right. kind of chill on your role, too. Like, mm-hmm. if the, if you step in, like, as a man to raise a kid and be their father and their father's completely gone, you the, you the father. But the father is, like, in the, like, acting, you might, you, y'all have to have a conversation. Yeah. You and him have to, like, hey, you bro, play what am your I? Role. What are, you know? What's my role? What's my role yeah. here? You, what do you what do you allow? What are you comfortable with? What do you? Because you can't be stepping on his biological father's toes. Right. He, if he says he's deep in in there, he gonna be like, "Hey, bro, what you what you doing?" Mm-hmm. There, I saw a really interesting thing on uh, Instagram, and it said, "Don't say it takes a village to raise a child if you get mad at other villagers for disciplining your kids." Do you think that applies? I get the sentiment because I remember back. I it wasn't. My era, but in my mom and dad's era, you did get disciplined by neighbors, aunties. Like if somebody, if the neighbors saw you at cutting up, they had car blanche to go in and and check you. You know what I mean? That that's what they did. And I think, you know, over time, it's gotten way more, you know, serious. But I it, I think it depends on like I wouldn't be mad if I send them whoever they stand with at the time is in charge. Mm-hmm. If I send them to my mom's house and they come back with a whooping or whatever, well, hell, you just got a whooping. Right. If they at my brother's house or whatever, whoever I'm, they're in charge. They are in charge now. I'm not saying beat the hell out of my kids or whatever, or you know, hunger strikes. Kids got to be whatever. disciplined. Yeah. You, you but you have a right to discipline. If my child over. is staying with you, you can discipline. It, especially fam- like if I'm if you watching my kid for a couple hours, you can you know tell them to chill on some stuff. But you know there is lines. And I think too, like back in the day, back in the day was different too because you know there's a lot of shady stuff going on that people didn't even talk about mm-hmm. molestation yeah. and like all that. That village raising the kid could get really creepy. Yeah, and like you know it's a different time now. We're more you know cognizant of you know people out here shady pedophiles. You know, so we got to be more protective with the children at the same mm-hmm. time. Because if you look back in the day. People was getting molested left and right yeah. back in the day by neighbors, family members. Like you know, you was with you was with your cousins and them. That's who touched me. Yeah. And so you know, so now that village is like there's a lot of shadiness in the yeah. village. So now you got to kind of be like keep your kids in a little bubble more so. Or than, pick and it's not like it's, it's not like it's worse now. It's yeah. just we're talking we about it more now. now. Yeah. And so you got to be mindful of that too. But I ain't got to be mindful of your village. I don't think people would be people too loose with the village. Even like how Tony was talking about when people are dating, stop introducing people to your kids super early. Right. Like, stop doing that. If that's what you want to do, you want to have your little life or whatever, fine, I get it, do that. But your kids, stop exposing your kid to Man. strangers. That's weird. Before Sabrina, like, nobody met my kids in that capacity in terms of this is, this is a girl, kids, nobody. That's, that's ridiculous. It was just, you know, they looked at me as like single dad over here, mm-hmm. you know, and so I was definitely not the type to be like, hey, boys, this is, yeah. you know, so and so. Hey, meet Sarah, meet Diane, meet Crystal, meet, you know, nah. Smart. That's definitely smart. I hate when I see them stories on the news like, you know, girlfriends, girl's boyfriend kills child and they've been dating for six months. Why the hell is this dude around your child? And his name was Steve. <laughs> It's always Steve. <laughs> you know, statistically, it is a stepdad that's most likely to kill mm. a kid. Really? Yeah. Well, that's also, and it's weird because it's across humans and animal kingdom too. <laughs> the animal the stepdads? stepdads? Oh yeah. Well, cats do it all the time. They'll just come Hilarious. in, they'll kill someone else, the other one's kids, so they can come in and mate with the female. So I don't. We're still animals. Yeah. Unless you're a lion. You know, lions are so shady. Lions. The the lioness will sleep with multiple dudes. So that, so nobody knows who the father is. So if one dude don't want to take care of it, the other one will. Smart. She sleep with She's multiple dudes. Smart. I saw. I was like, yo, she'll sleep with multiple dudes. And then when the baby come, which one of y'all take care of this kid? <laughs> it's then, your bride. And, <laughs> and then so yeah, if the dude don't want to step up, then she be like, oh. Then I'm thinking like, what if somebody find out like this is my baby? Like you know, ah. 
Lions is a cold game. They don't think they know, like, oh, his mane is dark, your mane is dark. <laughs> Look at him, Maury. He got the same mane as you. That's your baby. And the cold part is a lot of the dudes that are in that pride are related. So they really can't tell. Yeah, same thing. It would be a lot of incestuous BS in the Lion King. And the Lion is just be like. That's why I'm like tigers all day. That's why I prefer really? tigers over lions. They're a better shady. looking animal too. I like tigers. Tigers are the looking best visually. looking cats. Of, well, I think mountain lions arguably have the best face in the game. But mm-hmm. like the the coat and they solo. Yeah. The dads are shitty in the Tiger Kingdom though. Yeah, because they, they smash always, and dip. And yeah, then, you know. But they're they're solo. Ain't no pride with tigers. There's no. I like you know, the pride though. And they do their own hunts. You know, the male hunts, the female hunts, They just do it on the. And I like that. It's more me. You know. Lions, the group, the family. I respect that too. But I like, it's like that. dependency. Mm-hmm. And then the dads don't do nothing. The males, they in the, the women, they let the women hunt, and then they come in. Yeah, yeah what you got, bitches? <laughs> That's true. The men <laughs> are there to protect for, uh, against other lions. Yeah, that's what they yeah. do. But, but but still, man, get in on this food though. Yeah, I mean, How often are the other dudes running up? Quite a lot. often, and usually it's your own son, like coming for the kingdom. <laughs> your own, but that's your, your own, own people. That's be your own fault. People. I think it's time now. Oh, you you want some of this? <laughs> you want some of this? You think you t- – <laughs> they be like, all right. I like, I like when they show it, like when he challenge and then get whooped and he do the trot off. Like, mm-hmm. all right, but I'll be back, though. <laughs> the trot off be mad funny. <laughs> and then the, 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 the big line will lay down like, yeah, that's what I thought. As he licks his wounds, <laughs> motherfucker cut me. <laughs> it's rough out there in the cat streets. But tigers all day, man. And tigers. they they don't They live in the jungle. Lions don't live in no goddamn jungle. Don't they live on the that set. That's uh, not a jungle. Safari, nah. They the king of the jungle. They don't even live there. <laughs> there was probably jungle back when. Nah, man. Back in the day, the whole Sahara used to be covered with water the Savannah, and stuff. That, that was before. That was millions of years ago. <laughs> that was that was like 10,000 years ago. I'm not even messing around. What, what was 10,000 years ago? The, the climate shifted like dramatically. There's like water erosion on the Sphinx, and they're like, it's got to be 12,000 years or older. It's a whole different podcast. We'll go on a journey of whatever happened. Yeah, because we, we are an hour in. Yeah. And I'm past my expiration date. <laughs> Sick of this. <laughs> Sick of it. All right, well, that's it. Uh, <laughs> y'all got any more questions? You got uh, any shows to plug? Oh, uh, who are we dropping this this week? Yeah. Tomorrow? Oh, oh, oh I'll be in Kansas City uh, this weekend at the Kansas City Improv. All weekend, six shows. Pull on up. Uh, yeah. Keenan Baker will be there, too, you know, conspiracy theorist. And they're, uh, yeah, pull up, man. Yeah, I'm local this week. I just flappers Friday, 8 and 10. Possibly something Saturday, but y'all can check my website, keonpoli.com. And shout out to uh, Virginia last weekend. Oh, Virginia, they man. They was dope, shout Richmond, to Virginia. Shout out man that brought this shirt, too. He oh, yeah. He brought the show, you know what I'm saying? They oh. was super dope. It was fun. Oh, they were great. Super friendly. And Richmond. they were fans of the podcast. But I was I was telling Tony, I, assume, I assumed that most people watch it on YouTube, but in reality, you know, most people are listening when they go to work. So like I would be on stage and they'd be like, his voice sounds familiar. <laughs> but I realized they'd never seen me before. They just listened. So then after the show, they was like, you the dude from the podcast. I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> the audio me. component. They was just like, I knew you sounded familiar. Yeah, man. So if you, if you listen and you don't watch, you can ask questions on the Instagram page. If you have no access oh, yeah. to the YouTube. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So just ask them, uh, don't put it in a DM. But put it on, on a comment on one of the on of the, the posts. Daddy Issues Instagram page. Yeah. Yeah. If you put it on mine, I won't see it. Yeah, yeah. So at Daddy Issues Real because we're the real one. Uh, just put that. <laughs> <laughs> put a question in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and uh, as usual, we out here. Done. So. <laughs>